I'm pleased this evening to extend a warm welcome to each of you as we begin our 2011 Alumni Awards and Recognition Banquet. I'm Deborah Preto. I'm the Alumni Director here at the University, and I have the pleasure this evening of being your MC. Before we begin our meal tonight, if I could ask you to please bow your head, I would like to bring the invocation. Dearest Heavenly Father, we stop to give thanks to you for all the gifts you have bestowed on each and every one of us. We are ever grateful for our family, our friends, and the extended Fort Hayes State family gathered here this evening. We thank you for the blessings of the food of which we are about to partake and the hands that have prepared it. Please watch over us as we enjoy this weekend's festivities and guide us safely back to our home. In the Lord's name, we pray. Amen. Dinner will now be served. Please enjoy the meal and also continue visiting with family and friends. Thank you. Good evening again, everyone. For those of you uh, still eating, please continue as we begin tonight's program. Homecoming is always an exciting time on the Fort Hayes State campus, and this year is without exception. The official theme is Tigers Are For Real. We've had a tremendous homecoming to date. Uh, we had our half century group here today. Uh, we have four events going, different banquets across campus going on, so we're very, very excited to have everyone back, including each and every one of you. With the enrollment approaching 13,000, the lowest tuition in the region, and many honors and awards for both our students and our faculty, Fort Hay State has never been better. A university cannot achieve and sustain greatness without a leader with a broad vision, ability to guide a diverse group of faculty and students, Tonight, it's my honor to uh, share with you our next guest. He arrived on campus in 1987, and he'll celebrate his 25th anniversary with our university. He is the longest serving president of our university and also the Kansas Board of Regents. He continues to be the driving force for Fort Hayes State in terms of forward thinking, world ready education. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the eighth president of Fort Hay State, Dr. Edward A. Chamon. Thank you very much, Deborah. Uh, we have some special guests. I have my colleague, uh, the uh, president of Emporia State here, uh, Ed Flingey. And Ed, it's a real honor to have you here to help us uh, honor a, a good friend, mutual friend of ours. So it's a real pleasure to have you join us. As uh, you probably have read, things are going very, very well at Fort Hay State University. Uh, our enrollments are skyrocketing, uh, just going through the roof. It's, it's amazing uh, how well our institution has done. A lot of that is because of many people in this room who've contributed support, uh, both monetary as well as making phone calls for us and helping us in so many ways. So I want to first of all start off by thanking each and every one of you for all that you've done to help make our university so successful. How do you define success? Well, there's a lot of ways. But one of the ways I like to define success is to look at what happens to our students and how our students do. And Mark Bannister, our dean of the College of Business, would be the first one to jump up and talk about how his students have done. Because just recently, our financial planning students uh, went to the national championship and uh, came back from San Diego, rated the number one program in the country. And so, yeah. and that's just an example. Uh, some school in the Little Apple, um, Manhattan, was third. Um, K State was third. Uh, University of Georgia was fourth. I think uh, Texas Tech was fifth. Uh, Florida was six. Not bad company to hang around in if we have to uh, to hang around. Uh, in fact, I've talked about uh, thought about uh, calling the president and asking him if he needs some help with the economy. We could probably <laughs> loan him some of our students. They may be able to to help. But that's just one example of uh, 
of our success. Our art students, uh, again, have been ranked as the number one, have the number one ranked uh, uh, program in the, in, the, uh, in the country in graphic arts. And I can remember, we talked about it at noon, I can remember when I first came here and talked about high tech, high touch, and a, a new master plan and, and vision for the university. And John Thorns came over and he said, well, you know, I don't know about technology um, in the art department. You know, the painting and the sculpture and the rest, it's pretty much been the same for some time. But I got this young guy over here by the name of Chai Watt who's really good about this graphic stuff. And if we give him a little resources, he could maybe really develop something. And boy, John was right. And today, whether you go to San Francisco or whether you go to Chicago, whether you go to New York, you will find our graduates in top flight positions in graphic design and graphic arts because of the quality of the program that our art department has provided. Or our tech study students that go out and, and compete against the engineering schools in, the, in the, what they call the technology challenge. And this year, again, they came back as uh, national champions. Uh, and that's an interesting competition because at the morning, at breakfast, you're handed a problem. This year it was to design a, uh, a, a gear shifting system that would be able to, gear sh to downshift an Indianapolis racing car at over 60 miles an hour. So they are given that problem and they have till noon to come up with their answer and submit it in writing. The judges pick five of the proposals and put them in CAD labs to produce the product and demonstrate it works by nine o'clock at night. Now that's pressure. And Fort Hayes finished first. Other schools in the top five were MIT, Georgia Tech, Cal Berkeley. Now that shows you the kind of quality education that they get at Fort Hayes. Our students do exceptionally well. Again this year, 90, even in this difficult economic time, 96% of last May's graduates were employed six months after graduation in our study that we just completed. We call every employer, we call every student because we want to know what did we do right and what did we do wrong so we can improve it. And without asking those kind of questions, you can't. So quality education is the key that's driving our enrollments along with our price point. The fact that our tuition is only $105 a credit hour. When we survey our students, quality of instruction, quality of the academic program is number one. Cost is number two as to why at Fort Hayes State this year, we have 926 freshmen, new record. It was uh, 851 a year ago, 926 this year. Our overall enrollments at the university increased by 919. If you add all of the schools together, all seven universities, you add the 19 community colleges, you add the technical schools, you put them all together, all of those entities, all of those state-supported educational entities in Kansas, all of them are only serving 856 more students. Our growth was 919. You take us out of the mix in Kansas, is deficit. They are serving and educating less students at a time when we must serve more. And if you look at all three of our, of our modalities of delivery, you look at our on-campus, you find tremendous 8% growth, growth rate at, on campus. You find the virtual college growing at 12.3%. We're the number one provider of distance learning in the state of Kansas. And that includes Phoenix University. But, you know, if you're make, making a decision between paying $154 or $454 a credit hour or $105 a credit hour for tuition, what are you going to do? You know, I think Kansas is smart enough to figure that out, and they have. And our China program grew by 4.5%. So all three of our modalities are growing right now at record rates. And uh, Fort Hay State is closing in on, as, as Deborah said, on 13,000, and at the rate we're going, we will pass Wichita State and be the third largest institution in the state within a year. All we need to do is to continue to support the high quality faculty, continue to provide the resources to the programs that produce the kind of students that we can all be extremely proud of. That's our past. Our future is equally bright, 
because I honestly believe that our strategic plan, our forward-thinking, world-ready plan, will achieve its goal. We will serve 20,000 students in 2020. We're on track. When we said we were going to double enrollments in 1999, in the period 2000 to 2010, we were serving right around 5,000 students, and we said, well, by 2010, we'll be serving 10,000 students. Some people laughed. They didn't think that it would actually happen. Now when we say we're going to serve 20,000 students, people aren't laughing. They know that at Fort Hayes State, if the administrative team here, the faculty here, are committed to achieving that kind of objective, it will be done, and it will be done with high quality. My hope is that each and every one of you, each and every one of our alums and our friends, can continue to be <coughs> extremely proud to call yourself Tigers. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. Uh, to help us honor tonight's recipients, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the president of the Alumni Association. She's extremely dedicated. She listens every time we call. She always has an answer. She is a tremendous leader, and she has contributed greatly to the success of the association. Please join me in welcoming Brenda Herman. Good evening, everyone. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Alumni Awards Banquet. We're so glad you're here. What a good looking group we have ahead of us here. <laughs> um, and I also want to offer a very hearty congratulation to the seven individuals that we're going to be recognizing this evening. Dr. Hammond talked about the quality of education from students leaving Fort Hayes. I think you will see evidence of that tonight, as you do every year, as we recognize those folks who have gone on to be extremely successful. In their, in their professions and their careers. Uh, before I go into anything else, I would like to take just a moment um, to tell you that we have an extremely good board of directors. Uh, we have had for many years, but well, the people we have on the board right now are just uh, energetic, uh, they're helpful, they're um, just everything you need to help us to move forward. And at this time, I would ask that our current board of directors that are here tonight, please stand to be recognized. <laughs> and to add to that group, I've seen several of you who are here that were former members of the board. Would you please stand, please? Oh, Stephanie left. We really appreciate their efforts and their talents that they bring uh, to the table as we move forward to make the Alumni Association uh, better and better each and every year. Um, you know, I would be remiss and I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't give a little pitch for the Alumni Association. <laughs> I just want you to know that, you know, um, as an association and a staff, we work very hard uh, to keep you connected to family and friends and the university and literally the world. Um, we have the Fort Hayes State Magazine. Uh, that is published. We have um, email newsletters called the Tiger Talk that keep you informed. We've expanded the web page and we have lots of local and regional events uh, for alumni to keep everybody connected. We're very happy about that. By the way, if you haven't purchased already your state of Kansas Tiger Tag license plate, you might want to consider that because some of the proceeds from that go to generate scholarships to help support students of Fort Hayes State University in the future. A new campaign that got kicked off yesterday and unveiled is called The Shirt. Um, and it is a new, it's a t-shirt that will um, be sold every year with a different logo on it. And the proceeds from these t-shirts will go to a generational scholarship, meaning uh, um, folks like you who are alumni of Fort Hayes State University will be building a scholarship fund for your children and your grandchildren. And this was kind of a void that was not totally addressed in the past. And so um, they'll have the availability if they're eligible to um, have access to some of those scholarship dollars. So we ask that you get excited about that. The t-shirts are very reasonably priced and of course you'll want to buy a new one every year to keep your wardrobe up to, up to date. Before I go and, and lead the discussion about the Alumni Association, and Dr. Hammond, forgive me if you have this on your list to do, 
I would like for the, the uh, alumni staff to please stand and be recognized. Deborah, Charlene, Jeannie. Is Lisa here this evening? Oh, she's out here. You see Deborah up front because she is the executive director and just does a heck of a job. Um, there are not very many people who work in the alumni office, and uh, they do a phenomenal job. In fact, I need to have a, a discussion with Dr. Hammond. I'm sure they could use a little more help. However, <laughs> they do a great job, and I just want to say my personal thanks to them. Since I've been closely associated uh, on the board, I have learned in more, much more detail uh, all the things that they do. And uh, I, I really thank them for everything that they, all their effort that they put into putting on these events and so many others. And now, it is my distinct honor to present the 2011 Young Alumni Award recipient. The Young Alumni Achievement Award recognizes an individual that graduated from Fort Hay State 10 to 15 years ago for professional and educational achievement, community activities, honors and awards, or other accomplishments since graduation. Tonight, we will recognize Dr. Jesse Shaver, a scientist with Vadum Incorporated in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jesse, would you please make your way to the podium? I'm going to tell you a little bit about Jesse as he's on his way here. Jesse Shaver earned a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry from Fort Hay State University in 2001. He went on to earn a PhD in molecular physiology and biophysics in 2007 and an MD in 2009, both from Vanderbilt University. At Fort Hay State, Jesse was a Robert C. Byrd Scholar, a Fort Hay State Presidential Scholar, a Dane G. Hansen Scholar, a National Merit Scholar, and received the Fort Hay State Tomanic Award during his freshman year. And if that wasn't enough, he was also the student body president. He is now a scientist with Vadum in North Carolina, which is a defense firm that provides research and engineering solutions for counter electronic warfare, radio frequency measurement, and intelligence. In addition, he has done research on optical instruments and systems and holds two patents on a device to measure physiological characteristics of the cornea. His doctoral studies were supported through the Vanderbilt Vision Research Center and the National Institute of Health Medical Scientist Training Program. Jesse's wife, the former Kelly Crispin, is also a Fort Hayes State graduate. Would you please join with me in congratulating Dr. Jesse Shaver. I guess uh, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you very much. I am very, very honored to receive the Young Alumni Award. And having uh, recently turned 32, it's, it's actually nice to receive any award with Young in the name. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a day brightener. <coughs> Ten years goes by fast. I graduated from Fort Hayes in 2001 with a degree in chemistry, minors in mathematics and physics, and to be honest, I spent most of that past decade that's, that's uh, since then in, in school. Uh, as they stated, I attended Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. Now, luckily for me, Vanderbilt school colors are black and gold, so I didn't have to go out and buy any extensive new game day clothes. And as Mr. Darren Jameson can tell you, I'm not much of a clothes shopper, although I, do think, I, I am interested by this new t-shirt program that they mentioned. As they stated, I earned my medical doctorate and a PhD in molecular physiology and biophysics, and it is very nice to have a dual doctorate because other doctors will still call you doctor. <laughs> However, as my friends will tell you, I still answer to Jesse, Shaver, and Hey You as well. <laughs> Fort Hayes State University is literally a home to me. I grew up in Ellis County. I attended grade school in Shinshin and high school at Hayes High. And Fort Hayes allowed me to pursue my education without leaving behind my family and friends. And a lot of those friends and family are here tonight to help us celebrate. And my wife Kelly is here as well. She's also Fort Hayes alumna, graduate in elementary education, speech pathology in 2004, and she's a speech pathologist. We're living in Cary, North Carolina, which is a nice little town near Raleigh. 
and the uh, locals refer to Cary as the containment area for relocated Yankees. <laughs> but I would like to mention that they, they, they told me this directly to my face, so I feel that they've accepted me as one of their own. And I do work for Vedum Incorporated, which is a small defense contracting firm in Raleigh, and it's a very interesting and rewarding job, and I get to put my uh, extensive education to work every day on interesting and important problems. Fort Hayes was very good to me. I was given a very solid foundation in chemistry, physics, mathematics, biology. I had the opportunity to attend many of my classes in what was at that time the newly constructed Tamanic Hall, and I've also had a chance to see some of the upgrades and renovations to many of the science facilities, Albertson Hall and others, uh, over, the, over the years as well. Fort Hayes also provided me with a good balance of what, what I'd call traditional arts and sciences courses, uh, very, very strong general education curriculum, great classes in history, philosophy, language arts. Fort Hayes really has some of the greatest professors, facilities, and, and just a great classroom atmosphere, one where the students feel very free to interact with their peers and the professor, uh, ask probing questions and the, professor, the professors will give you as much time as, as you want to need uh, to, to really absorb the material. I also participated in extracurricular activities, student government, chemistry club, very rewarding experiences. If it wasn't for chemistry club, my wife may never have fallen in love with me. So, <laughs> it's a story, but it, 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 to tell the story might go over the time we have allotted. So. <laughs> So I, I've since put that educational foundation through its paces. Um, in medical school and graduate school, my classmates had attended some very prominent private universities, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Dartmouth, Cornell, Stanford. And I can say that I was every bit as well prepared for my medical and doctoral studies. And another nice thing, I didn't have the $400,000 to $200,000 in undergraduate educational debt that many of them carried the day they started medical school. And I can say for, the, for, for some of them, they passed that quarter million mark early on. <laughs> uh, Fort Hayes has done a very, very good job of controlling the inevitable rise in the cost of education, providing good scholarship support to its students. And uh, this has made a very, very big difference to many students, uh, myself included. Dr. Hammond and his administrative team have continued to build this university and the network of alumni who are well represented in this room today have continued to support the university and students and that's really what's made it all possible. I'm very glad, very proud, and very thankful to be a Fort Hay State Tiger and I, I am trying to hold these comments to under four minutes so uh, you can feel free to <laughs> applaud for up to 30 seconds. <laughs> He is an awesome young man. I had the opportunity to visit with him last night at a reception, and uh, he's very down to earth, but golly gee whiz, is he smart. <laughs> <laughs> Our next award is the Nida M. Landrum Award, and it's presented each year to someone who contributed volunteer service, both to the Alum Alumni Association as well as the university. This year, this award goes to Larry Dryling senior field editor for the High Plains Journal headquartered in Dodge City. Larry, would you please make your way up to the podium? Larry Dryling earned two Bachelor of Arts degree at Fort Hayes in 1980, one in political science and the other in communication. He added a Master of Science in communication in 1985. Larry has been also an active community volunteer. He is a past president and two-time Paul Harris Fellow of the Hayes Rotary Club, also serving as Rotary District 5670 Public Image Chair. He's a member of the Hayes Area Chamber of Commerce and the Kansas Calvary. Larry served two four-year terms on the Alumni Association Board of Directors and was Communications Director for the Boot Hill Chapter. He was a member of the Athletic Association Advisory Board and is an alumni representative on the Tiger Auction Planning Committee. He has been a member of the Tiger Athletic Club since 2001 and is an advocate for Fort Hayes Legislative Support Network. Now this next seg segment I found very interesting and I quote, Larry was a Victor E. Tiger before there was a Victor E. Tiger. <laughs> 
And when I read that, I read it twice and then went on to read, he was the Tiger mascot when he was a student and then went on to earn money to help pay for the new Victory Tiger mascot suit. Please welcome and congratulate Larry Dryling. Well, thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. And uh, thank you, Deborah, and the entire board of the Fort Hayes State University Alumni Association for this award. Yes, I served eight years on the board of the Alumni Association and served five years on the Awards and Recognition Committee. And so I know uh, every May when those awards come out, how difficult a stack of paper that award selection comes uh, to a head. And uh, you, uh, you had a, a big, uh, big choice there, Deborah, and, and staff and, and committee. And I know how hard this was. And, and uh, thank you. This is quite an honor. I'm truly humbled. And Deborah, thank you for putting up with me the last few weeks as this whole thing. I'm the only local, pretty much, in this award ceremony thing tonight. And so I was constantly giving Deborah fits. And you've just been great, Deborah and staff, for this whole weekend. And I got to give you a hand. I really do. Staff, thank you. I want to congratulate the other members of our wonderful class of honorees for your achievements. I have to single out a longtime hero of mine, Lyle Stott. Lyle is a former student body president at Fort Hayes State. He was a senior when I was a freshman on Student Senate. Lyle held a, led a special committee that reformed the Student Government Association Constitution. The changes the committee placed on the rest of us to vote on were quite controversial at the time such as the elimination of class presidents. He took a lot of personal heat, and I mean he people took out ads against this man and the leader for wanting these changes. I mean, they, were got, they got nasty and personal. But those, those changes moved student government from a popularity contest to making significant improvements in the way students could work with administrators, the legislature, the regents, and just getting things done in this, in this world and you made, you're a game changer, sir. You are a game changer, pal. And I just want to say, Lyle Stubb, you've always been one of my heroes. And what you and that committee did should never be forgotten. I mean that with all my heart. Some people consider Fort Hayes State a place of higher learning. But as you can see, when I can talk to a Lyle Stubb or any of us in this room, we're really about a family here. And now, no matter how far this, this family has been flung, in all the different ways that Dr. Hammond has developed through not just on campus, but in the virtual college and in our China programs, it's all about the people. And in my last 35 years since I set foot on this campus as a student, it's been about my immediate family, and as my late mom, Dorothea, once put it, my second family, the family of Fort Hayes State. Mom was a Fort Hayes Stater most dear to me, and I lost my mom to a rare form of cancer six years ago, and I know that she's looking down from heaven tonight, shaking her head, giving me a dug, and saying, Big Larry, move along. Your father's about ready to say, stop preaching a sermon. <laughs> Ma was real practical on that, and, and I'm sure that she'd be tickled with the festivities tonight, and I miss her not being with me as I accept your honor. I do want to introduce my guest for this evening. First of all, my dad, my favorite Fort Hayes stater, Al Dryling who taught me the meaning of doing good in the world when he told me, Larry, you come into this world bare-ass naked, you leave it the same way on a slab. What you do with your life between those times matters. And I've taken that advice and I've tried to make it his legacy by giving him a kid who grew up to repay the generosity given him. Thanks, pal. I appreciate the generosity you've given me. Also with me is my nephew, Paul Dryling Ayala, a fourth-generation Tiger graduate. My sister, Donna Ayala, my oldest nephew, Mike Hofer, and my great friend, my nominator for this award, Fort Hayes State's creative director, Mary Ridgway. Mary, more on you in a minute. <laughs> also with me tonight are a bunch of great people who have been a part of my life over the years. First up, an old buddy from the Hayes neighborhood, John Alden Smith. Next, my employer, High Plains Journal. They have given me the most incredible opportunities to travel the world, interview presidents, princesses, uh, to travel to 25 foreign countries. And I say, where did you, people say to me, where did you go to school? 
And I said, I didn't go to some fancy agricultural college. I went to Fort Hayes State where I learned it under, the, under some great people. And Jeff Keaton and his wife, Janet, are here, our circulation manager and his wife. Thank you, Jeff, for representing the High Plains Journal family. Thank you so much for being here. It really means a lot. Together, we've taken our readers to places neither of us would have ever imagined. It's just so cool you're here. Next, my buddy from graduate school. Technically, he was an undergrad when I met him, but we are fast friends, pals to this day. In his days here, he was the editor of the University Leader, and he himself was the winner of a National Student Award of Investigative Journalism for his reporting on substandard housing for athletes here on our campus, and he reformed the way student athletes are taken care of here. He's now the editorial page editor of the Colorado Springs Gazette, Wayne Loggison and his wife, Dee Dee. Wayne, your friendship means so much. Thank you for being here. And finally, I was going to introduce someone who is so dear to all of us in the Fort Hayes State family. Uh, her late husband, Jack Heather, founded the radio television film department, was guide, teacher, counselor, friend to so many of us. And uh, she was his constant companion for so many of us. Uh, Peggy Heather was uh, going to be with us tonight, but Peggy came down with some bronchitis and is unable to join us. Please offer a little prayer to Peggy tonight and hope that she's doing great, man, great, and uh, real soon. We know that joke. There. Only, us, only, us, only, only Jack's kids understand that joke. I've seen so many other wonderful people here who have been a part of this wonderful ride of life that began when I set foot on this campus back in 1976, and it's great to see all of you. And I need to point out, I am a third generation tiger. My grandmother, Edna Blakely, earned her life certificate. Her sister, Nellie Schutz, earned a bachelor's degree from Hayes Normal and Fort Hayes, State, Kansas, Fort Hayes, Kansas State College way back in their day, likely close to 100 years from ago. Mom and dad attended FHKSC back in the late 30s and early 40s. And they told me of professors like Bill Moreland in my dad's major, political science, Mary May Paul in my mother's education major, and Edna Triplett, who taught both of them English. And they had classmates like Teddy Tedesco, who had a daughter, Nola, who's now retiring as DA in Wichita. Mickey Spillane, John Wolk, who was in that bunch too. They enjoyed their time here. And as for me, I really wasn't counting on attending Fort Hayes State. As a kid from the Denver suburbs, I was planning on attending the University of Colorado until Dad hauled me out here during spring make my junior year for a campus visit. And I got to meet another classmate that got there. It's a guy by the name of Jerry Tamani. And I got to meet Jack Heather and Don Selecta, Dr. Moreland's successor, is the chair of the political science department. And I walked around the crowd and, well, I fell in love with this place. Don, as well as Jack's chair, the late Jim Costigan, set it up so I could have a double major in political science and communication. This small enough to appreciate and big enough to accommodate attitude, along with the fact that I could pare tuition down to one quarter of the cost of CU in just one year of residency, made the choice of moving to the plains of western Kansas and dear old Fort Hayes State an easy one. My parents were planning on taking an early retirement and moving back to either Joaquini or Hayes, so the whole process was very smooth. And of course, besides the aforementioned faculty, I had other great teachers here in political science. Dick Heil. Hi, Jerry. There you are. Okay. The guy we called the coach, Ken Oldfield and Pat Drynan. Over in Malloy Hall, Jack's right-hand man, Dave Lafergie, gave us top-notch training in TV production live and without a net. Our engineer, Bud Baxter, kept us from screwing up things too much, right, Mark? Yeah, I guess you can say I was a student of convergence journalism when that term really didn't exist. Dave Adams, our wild and crazy advisor to the leader and late lamented Reveille, bring it back, student government, was along with the sidekick, Jeannie Lambert, two of the best all-around teachers I ever had. When Dave Adams left for Parts East, Harold Peterson filled Dave's shoes with his own unique style, and they taught me to dig deep and write well, and I'll always appreciate it. And they've all gone to their reward, and I miss them dearly tonight. I also want to thank former instructor Cindy Danner Kuhn, who gave me a lot of encouragement, and she guided me toward a National Collegiate Business Journalism Award while I was here. She was a wonderful advisor to the Reveille. And along with this amazing core group of teachers, there were people like administrators Dr. Bill Jellison and Harold Eikhoff, Dorothy Knoll, Herbie Songer, Jim Kellerman. In English, I miss Bob Watt Maxwell, who we lost earlier this year. But I had other props like Paul Gatchett, Nancy Vogel, Cliff Edwards, Pam Schaefer, and Al Garretts, who offered, offered constant hands with my writing skills. John McGaugh, Gary Brower, who gave me a real a first taste of agricultural reporting 
fantastic. John Clear, Robert Lures made Halloween history come alive. Gary Hewlett and Gene Flea Hardy, you guys were the finest tag team ever, but it came to grappling with the great question, can man survive? <laughs> Rose Arnold and Jerry Cox gave me wonderful experiences in sociology. Irv Elsey made the Apple II computer come alive for me. I'm Apple to the core to this day. Joan Rumpel, to her credit, tried her darndest to teach me accounting. Jack McCulloch, Dan Rupp, and Bill Rickman helped me suffer through economics without my eyes glazing over. I was so blessed to be a part of this place as a student and feel so much a part of this place today. As people like my pal from Radio Days, Mark Bannister, leads our College of Business and the gang in media studies have now given me a seat on the Informatics Department Board of Advisors. Thanks, Flash. Thank you so much for continuing to let me be a part of this wonderful bunch that wants to help the universe, this universe, the department that leads so much of the fighting Tiger Nation for being forward thinking and world ready. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. You're, you're letting me be a part of this. The team in political science, especially Larry Gould, Shayla Mills, Chap Rackaway, Josephine Squires have continued to welcome me back home. And through their efforts, I've become a policy fellow in the university's think tank, the Docking Institute of Public Affairs, where I've become a part of the university's public affairs program and efforts on the hosted the Kansas Legislature Show. And it's an honor to work with such talented people in Poli Sci and Larry, it's still great to work with you. I'm proud that I've been able to keep my bonds of Tiger family going long after I've graduated and hope the love lasts forever as informatics new home rises up in the next few years. And yes, finally, Tiger Athletics is something that has been always dear to me, mainly because I was such a lousy athlete. And I admired the hard work of our student athletes going all the way back to Skip Numerick and, and uh, great Mark Wilson and Max Hamlin. I was happy to serve two different terms on our athletic corporation board and yes, yes, I was the Tiger mascot. And so for athletic purposes, I had to stay eligible so I was an athlete too. I tried out on a dare from, KY, from the KFHS radio announcing staff saying that tryouts were open and I was getting ready to do a campus newscast. And they said, hey, Larry would be a great mascot. So under a current of support from the gang in Malloy Hall, I tried out and damned if I didn't get the job. I had fun as the mascot. I worked part time at KYS on Saturdays. Uh, I wish Bob Schmidt and Pat were here, but I saw them come and go, and, and it's great to see them. And so when there were night games, I'd take off right after work at 5 o'clock, drive over to Lewis Field where I changed into the parking lot into the Tiger and then did my bit to increase the spirit of our games. And yes, I see Bob Lowe in here and he did his part for many years too. Thank you, Bob. I can remember getting pictures with little kids and I can remember how I made one little boy cry every time I walked up to him. <laughs> and 20, this is the fun part. This is a real ironic part, Dr. Hammond. You'll know this kid. 20 years later, that kid made opposing running backs cry. He was Brandon Pishney, who grew into one fierce fighting Tiger linebacker. That's my favorite mascot story. I always throw it at Brandon when I see him. And not only did I mascot wrestling, track, volleyball, gymnastics, and of course basketball, I got to be fast friends with a core bunch of guys who later went on to win the NAIA District 10 title in 1981. I was reporting for KAYS by that time, but it was great to share that. And as the years went on, I've watched a lot of mascots come and go. And I kept telling our athletic directors that if ever this school stopped developing a new mascot logo every time there was a coaching change or a new marketing idea, I'd pay for a decent mascot outfit. Well, enter my dear friend Mary Ridgway. As our university's graphic designer, she came up with the current Victory Tiger mascot that has since 2000 become basically the synonym for Fort Hayes State. The running joke is that she and I have a son together, and his name is Victory Tiger. <laughs> Through Mary's wonderful design efforts, she gave birth to him, and like any good dad, I pay the bills for the kid. So Mary, Mary was my nominator on this award. Thank you, dear, for nominating me. I'm so happy to share this tonight with you because you gave us the symbol of a fighting spirit a joy of learning, and just plain fun that we are so proud of. Thanks for being mom to Victory Tiger. <laughs> so as a treat for Mary, Dr. Hammond, and all you fighting tigers out there, 
Please welcome my great kid, Victor E. Tiger. <laughs> my kid. Okay, one time, real quick. T I G E R S Go Tigers! One more time. T I G E R S Go Tigers! Thank you again for this wonderful award. God love you and go Tigers! Once I saw that the committee was serious about giving Larry the award, I was dreading this night the whole <laughs> for six months now. And Mary, uh, I know she and I talked about, she said, can I take it back? I said, no, it's too late. <laughs> no, she didn't, she didn't. Congratulations and uh, to both Jesse and, and to Larry. Um, they have been part of our tradition and lore of this campus for different reasons uh, for, for many, many years. And now it's time to uh, recognize our distinguished alumni uh, with our distinguished service uh, awards. Uh, and we have three of them we're, we're giving tonight. And the first one goes to uh, Steve Shields, so I'd like Steve to please join me up here. Uh, Steve attended Fort Hayes State from 1974 to 1976. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Social Work from uh, Kansas State University in 94 uh, with a secondary major in long-term care administration, which was only appropriate. From 94 until January of this year, he was the CEO and president of Metal Ark Hills Retirement Community in Manhattan, which pioneered and shaped the household model uh, for transforming institutional nursing homes into comfortable living homes that provide solid and good living arrangements for our elderly. He has been dedicated as an advocate for change in long-term care. Uh, Steve conducted a two-year international speaking tour that covered 28 countries uh, abroad as well as every one of our 50 states championing new standards and new kinds of care for our elderly. He has been featured on CBS, PBS, and also been involved in a number of national publications for his leadership in these areas. He truly is one of the most outstanding spokesmen for the way I want to be treated when I get a little bit older. <laughs> Steve has been a member of the Board of Trustees of Fort Hayes State University Foundation since 2006, he moved to emeritus status this last year in 2011, and it's now my pleasure to present to Steve Shields the university's highest honor of, the, of distinguished, uh, rather distinguished honor, our Distinguished Service Award. Thank you so much, and I feel honored. I feel illegitimate uh, because uh, I was the worst student I think this university's ever had. <laughs> and uh, my parents were so strict and had such high standards about not walking away from obligation that it was hard to live up to. So when I came here, it was a veritable Mardi Gras for me. And no one would have ever voted me likely to succeed. Uh, but I am honored. Uh, and I felt like I got some great roots here in friendships. I feel like I know people in almost every town in Western Kansas and now in many states and other countries that have Fort Hayes State roots. 
and I feel honored to uh, be associated with you, and I thank you for this. And thank you, Steve, for your continued support, uh, success of, uh, and helping to make the university a success. Now we'll move to the Alumni Achievement Award, which recognizes graduates who have made significant accomplishments in business and professional life, or who have provided uh, a distinguished uh, humanitarian service as well to their communities. Tonight we will recognize a number of recipients. Uh, the first that I would like to have join me uh, is, uh, is Les? Where was he? He was on. Okay. If he would come up. Les Anderson. Les Anderson uh, graduated from Fort Hay State University with a bachelor's degree uh, in English in 1970. He also earned a Master of Arts degree in journalism in 71 from the University of Missouri, Columbia. He has taught writing, editing, and community journalism courses for more than 35 years at Wichita State University. He helped start the weekly Wichita Sun in 1974 and in 75. And he and his wife, Nancy, who's with him tonight, started the Ark Valley News in Valley Center, a weekly that they published until they sold it in 2007. Les has served as president of the Kansas Press Association and as president of the Kansas Newspaper Foundation. He has earned numerous awards, including the Burton Marvin News Enterprise Award from the William Allen White Foundation of the University of Kansas and the Kansas Board of Regents Excellence in Teaching Award. Les holds a life membership status in our alumni association, and he and Nancy have five children uh, that they are extremely proud of. It's my pleasure to present our highest award to an alum of our institution, the Alumni Achievement Award, to Les Anderson. Thank heavens I didn't have to follow Larry. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Um, I appreciate the award tonight. Uh, when Deborah called me, uh, I said I won the Young Alumni Award. And she was quiet and said, you have a sense of humor, too. Uh, I do appreciate this. and. Uh, like Jesse said earlier, anything with young attached to it sounds good to me. Uh, the people you've heard from earlier are much younger. Uh, I started here 45 years ago because my high school English teacher, Paula Simon, who was from Hayes, uh, one day said, you ought to go to school in Hayes. I had no idea. Nobody in my family on either side had gone to college. And I had her for an English class and a journalism class. And I ended up in Hayes. I knew two other people, and neither of whom I saw at all after I came to Hayes. So I really felt like I was alone, uh, but it was a good experience. And coming out here, uh, when Nancy and I were driving out on Thursday, I, I realized uh, it was just the start of uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, when we were on I-70, uh, when I came to school here, the interstate didn't come all the way to Hayes. Uh, it became Tulane, uh, a little around the Ellsworth area, I think, somewhere in there, and somebody may correct me there. We ran into construction, so it was like uh, a one-lane, two-lane road again. And then there's the wind. Uh, you know, around Wichita, it's windy, but let me tell you, Hayes has wind. And the gale force winds as we came out reminded me of when I was a freshman uh, in McGrath Hall, which is now torn down, uh, and walking to my modern civ class at 8.30 in the morning, how cold it was. And I had forgotten to bring a coat, so I had a windbreaker, and until I went home at Thanksgiving, I froze going to that class. Um, now you see the wind farm on the way out here, so at least we're harnessing that wind. Uh, then there's Oktoberfest. I stopped by there again today. 
Um, they're a little more strict than they used to be when I went to school here. When I started school, I was 17. I didn't turn 18 until late November. But 18 was the drinking age, and to be honest, in Hayes, 17 was the drinking age. Uh, I never was carded once. Uh, not that I drank anything. Um, it's back then, I think we tapped the keg for Oktoberfest at 8 o'clock, and I can tell you that freshman year, uh, it was sort of like Steve said with Mardi Gras. I was there at 8 o'clock with a lot of other guys from McGrath in line. The other part that hasn't changed is it was good to see that the brass rail is still there. Uh, when I was in school, we used to hang out there a lot. It was fairly close to uh, our fraternity house. I was a Sigma Chi, and I think we had meetings there, as I recall. Um, but, you know, I, there are people you remember, like Ken Gottschalk, and uh, I had no idea what happened to Ken. Today I went to lunch with Lynn Ann Huntington from the uh, faculty here. I talked to her at one of her classes this morning, and we walked in, and the guy looked familiar. And I said to Lynn Ann, who, who is that guy? And he said, she said, that's Ken Gottschalk. And I said, you're kidding me. And is it called Gutches, Gucci's? And uh, I went, I, we called him over and I said, I have a complaint. And uh, I, we talked a little bit. And the interesting thing is, he had short hair in the 60s when I was here. The guy's got a ponytail. Um, he said he couldn't afford to, uh, get it cut, which we all know better. Uh, I gave him a lot of money in the old days. Um, when I got here, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have the internet, it was too expensive to make a long distance call, so we wrote a lot of letters, that's how we communicated, and uh, that's a lost art, I think. Um, Nancy and I were dating some, and I think I got a letter from her every day. Uh, she was in nurses training at the time. I wrote once or twice a week, maybe. Uh, I wasn't really good about that. My time in Hayes, uh, some of the people who influenced my life and my career uh, are from Fort Hayes State. Uh, at our table tonight, uh, Bob Lowen and Bev was here earlier. She's back at the back and I'm waving to her there. Two of the biggest influences in my life, probably. He didn't know that at the time, uh, but he has been. He taught me how to write. He taught me how to teach. Uh, and he taught me how to work with people, um, and he's meant a lot. When our oldest son played for the Hayes Larks a few years ago, uh, he stayed with Bob and Bev, and the last thing he said to us before we left was, tell the low inside. Uh, Bob and Nina May, Nina was the athletic director, secretary, as I recall. She's now deceased. Bob worked in the back shop and is still around town. Uh, good people, he taught me how to use a pica pole, taught me what a pica pole was. And then when I worked at the Hayes Daily, uh, Glenn Winholtz and Gene Anderson, two people who are no longer with us but who were big influences in my life. When I first heard about receiving the award after Deborah and I got over the young alumni thing, um, I had a phone message from a guy named Chuck Brim, who was the basketball coach for Hayes when I went to school here. And I kept stats for Chuck's team. I worked for Bob in sports information and I traveled a lot with the teams and I had no clue that Chuck would remember me from the late 60s and I was the kid with the clipboard and I wrote stories and that kind of stuff. But it was great to hear from him. I called back. Uh, talked to his wife Jane, and Chuck, of course, was on the golf course, which makes sense. Uh, he used to do a lot of that, too. Uh, I worked on the leader and a little bit on the Reveille and for university relations. We were in Martin Allen Hall, uh, which was a great place. I worked, I made lifelong friendships and uh, established relationships there with people like Joe Norris and Martin Halgill and Susan Trout, now Armstrong. Linda Meyer, now Linda Donnelly, Mike Berry, Lon Pishney, and Gary Freed. Um, the biggest change in my life probably came my freshman year. When I arrived on campus, I weighed 135. And at the end of my freshman year, I weighed a little over 220. Um, a lot of good dorm food and a lot of beer. Uh, 
and since then, all I've done is try to lose weight. Uh, I feel like an athlete that no longer works out. Um, I grew up in Hayes. I, I learned to live on my own. I learned to live with other people, to work with others. And this is where Nancy and I lived after we were married uh, before my senior year. Um, Fort Hayes gave me the foundation for what I wanted to do or I ended up doing for the rest of my life for my career, and I think, as I said earlier, people like Bob Lowen helped me determine what I wanted to do. Um, I probably sound a lot like Bob in the classroom when I teach. Um, I think it's important when you uh, choose a career that you do something you have passion for. Uh, I've always loved to write, and I learned to love to teach, and again, I think I picked those up uh, here in Hayes. On our way out here Thursday when we were fighting the wind on interstate, uh, we were listening to NPR and there was a piece on Steve Jobs, who just died, as most of you know, and uh, they replayed his commencement speech. I don't know if anybody else heard that. It was pretty amazing uh, what he told the Stanford grads in 2005. And uh, he, the one thing that stuck with me, um, besides the fact that he quit school and uh, ended up doing what he did was his advice that he took from somebody else, but he told them that day, and that was to stay hungry and stay foolish. Uh, I did a pretty good job of that uh, when I was at Hayes. I do have one regret, and that is that I didn't think of bottled water. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Les. I think a lot of us would have liked to have invented bottled water. Uh, Patty, could you join us up here? Patty Billinger. Uh, Patty earned her Bachelor's of Arts in degree in Political Science from Fort Hayes State University in 1992 and a Master of Science in Political Theory in 1994. She serves as the Regional Manager and Regional Management Officer for the Social Security Administration Office in Kansas City, which is one of, our, of only 10 such positions in the entire United States. She began her federal career as a claims representative in the Hayes office here uh, from 1994 until 2000, when she was promoted to management support specialist and operational supervisor in Wichita, Kansas. Then moving on to Kansas City, Patty now oversees the operations and the workload and strategic planning activities for the entire region with approximately 400 employees throughout Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri, and Iowa. While working with the Office of the Chief Administrative Law Judge, she was also named as the Commissioner's Backlog to the Commissioner's Backlog Reduction Team. And she was instrumental in both the national and regional levels in Social Security as they transitioned from paper to more electronic systems to speed up the delivery of services to the citizens of the United States. She and her husband, Ken, have had one son, the late Blaine, uh, who unfortunately left us recently. But it is my honor at this time to present our highest alumni award to Patty Billinger on behalf of the institution that loves her so much. Hello. President and Mrs. Hammond, Alumni Association Board, awards and recognition committee members, fellow awardees, families, and friends. What an honor it is to be back in Hayes on this beautiful campus to celebrate such a joyous and prestigious occasion. I have to say that all of my memories of living in this area, this time of year stands out as my favorite primarily because of the activities and excitement surrounding the Fort Hayes State University homecoming. And I, and I have to say that's not just because of Oktoberfest, although I did have a lot of fun at Oktoberfest in my days. Um, 
Although my career has taken me away from the area, I still call Western Kansas my home, and I'm proud to tell people that I graduated from Fort Hay State University. Um, it's not unusual for me to encourage high school seniors to visit campus to catch the tiger spirit, because once they visit, I, I have no doubt in my mind that they'll, they'll be back and that they'll want to enroll. Throughout the years, my, my husband and I have had the good fortune of traveling these United States and have taken the opportunity to visit several college campuses. I can honestly report that there is none so meticulously maintained and as beautiful as Fort Hay State University. And therefore, as cliche as this may sound, and in the, the words of Frank Baum's unforgettable character, character, and you all know who that is, that little girl from Kansas, there really is no place like home. Um, upon completion of my master's degree in 1994, I really had no idea where the road would lead. And like other graduating students, I was seeking an uh, employment. And I received an offer from somewhere, something called Social Security. And like everybody my age then, I thought, Social Security, do I even know what they do? Um, of course, I had heard something about it in the news, uh, but I couldn't remember what. And in retrospect, I'm sure whatever it is that I had heard, now that I'm wiser, it probably had to have been negative. Um, but on the flip side, I have really good news to report now that after some 17 and a half years of working for or in, in federal service, um, I finally, finally get it. Um, but seriously, really, it became really clear to me shortly after I started here in the Hayes Field Office. Um, a career with Social Security is a commitment to public service. Uh, people who work for the agency have to be willing to get involved, to care about the welfare of people in order to help millions of Americans with their preparation for entitlement to retirement, disability, survivors, Medicare, or supplemental security income benefits. Now currently I work with the Office of Disability Adjudication and Review, and that's just a long title for basically what we used to be called, which is the Office of Hearings and Appeals, is basically what we still do. That's the appellate branch of the agency. I stand before you now representing the thousands of federal workers across the SSA enterprise and who do what we do every single day because it, it matters. It matters to people like you and to me. I gratefully and humbly accept this Alumni Achievement Award with a warm heart and I'm honored and I want to take this opportunity to congratulate my fellow awardees this year and tell you how truly awed I was while reviewing the names of the recipients, those recipients from the past years, to be included in an award category with such great personas such as Dr. Fred Albertson, Dr. Lawrence Rarick, Dr. Gerald Tomanic, and so many others. It's truly humbling and it's sincerely just awesome. And then I suddenly realized that there's so much yet that I have to do. Um, my thanks to Dr. Hammond for his long-term commitment to the leadership of this great university and for his dedication to fight for the resources to, cut, to, to fund the cutting edge advancements in education and technology that have occurred since I've graduated. I must say props to you for this beautiful memorial union because it is absolutely stunning and beautiful. I'd like to also recognize the faculty of Fort Hay State who continue to further excellence in higher education. I'd like to thank the Alumni Board, the Alumni Association Awards and Recognition Committee, members for the long hour and hard work and dedication it must take to review those uh, nomination submissions. I extend a special thank you to the Alumni Association Executive Director Deborah Perdoe and the staff. Uh, for coordinating the press releases and the many, many events of this weekend, and for making sure that uh, we all get to where it is that we need to be. I want to also take a moment to remember two people who have been really particularly significant in both my academic and personal life, uh, both who served as mentor to me and who became lifelong friends. Um, ironically, both served as chairs of the political science department. They are Dr. Richard Heil and Dr. Don Selecta. These men taught me the liberal approach to thinking and problem solving. Don had numerous poignant and practical stories from his life as a practicing attorney that would always end up or end with relevant point or moral. And I could count on him, always count on him for sound guidance and fatherly advice. 
Dick Heil, of course, was the great mediator and demonstrated that one should calmly listen to both sides of an issue and make an educated decision without the benefit of extraneous political commentary. He'd always say, listen to both sides of the debate and then shut off the damn television. That was his advice to me. You don't need a political analyst to tell you what to think. Uh, seemingly simple advice, very relevant though. It's, it was particularly relevant, and it is right now at this juncture in my life, since the majority of my career is spent working in the political arena. Uh, sadly, both Dr. Select and Dr. Heil are no longer here, but I'm sincerely honored to have Dr. Heil's wife, Jerry, with us tonight, and I thank her for being here on his behalf. I also want to thank my parents for teaching me the benefits of hard work and the value of compassion for other beings both human and not so human. Um, and my heartfelt thanks and love certainly goes out to my son, Blaine, for allowing his mom the time from his fundamental years to be a non-traditional student. I also want to give him props for so kindly playing his Mario Brothers Nintendo game for what seemed like countless hours while I studied in what he believed was a silent mode. But trust me, it wasn't silent. It definitely wasn't silent. So I'll forever have uh, that Mario Brothers theme song etched in my mind. Uh, my thanks also to my family, including my brothers and sisters, or my brother and sisters. No, it would be my brothers and sister, and their spouses, and Ken's family and our friends, who have come out in full force today in overwhelming support, as they always do. I love all of you dearly. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that my sister and her husband are also on the faculty of this great university. That would be Dr. Gladys Swindler and Robert Swindler. And finally, I give my heartfelt gratitude to the man I love. He's my kindred spirit. He's my husband, who's, who's actually seen me at my worst and also at my finest. And he's been there through it all. Most notably, he offered nothing but support when I came to him with an idea in the late 80s that I wanted to quit my full-time job and go back to college. He, we were really both scared because we didn't know how we were going to pay the bills, and I know he thought I was really crazy. But my oh my, how far we've come, and there's a lot of dust in our rearview mirror, dear. But he's my life, and he's my soul, and that would be Ken Billinger, and I love you with all my heart. So thank you all, God bless, and enjoy the rest of this fabulous weekend. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Patty. And now Lyle. Lyle Staub graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Finance from Forte State University. Uh, in 1977. After completing a Master in Business Administration degree at Notre Dame in 79, he started with Corning uh, as a supervisor in accounting. His career since then has led him to leadership positions in manufacturing, accounting, commercial operations, in the medical diagnostic and consumer products industry. Lyle is active in Alpha, uh, Kappa Psi, which is a professional business fraternity. He speaks frequently uh, at its uh, principal business leadership institutes around the country. He received the Alumni Association's Young Alumnus Award in 1987, and he holds life membership status in the Fort Hay State Alumni Association. He's also been a member of the Board of Trustees of the Fort Hay State University uh, Foundation. He and his wife, Anne Marie, have three children, and at this time, it's my pleasure to present to Lyle our university's highest award. We get older, and we need these things. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hammond. Thank you, President Brenda. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, thank you, everyone with the Alumni Association, for all the fine work that has gone into this weekend. Fort Hayes State is a very special place to me for, for two reasons. You know, the first one was I grew up in Hayes. A few of the rest of us have talked about this today, but you know, 
the university and my hometown are intermingled. And really, for me, they're, they're indistinguishable. You know, the interesting and the cultured and the, the worldly people that came to Hayes made this town so much richer just by their presence and, of course, by their paychecks. You know, they were our neighbors. They were the parents of our classmates. They were Bob Lowen, whose house I spent a lot of time at. Uh, they were my scout master. They opened stores and galleries and put, you know, inter interesting books in the libraries. And some of them settled and became our mayors and our candidates for office and our civic leaders. Fort Hayes always was part of my life. Friday nights were the high school football games, TMP, Hayes High at Lewis Field. Saturday was the Tiger game. In the winter, we went to the Coliseum to watch Fort Hayes State. You know, Bob Davis, Bob Davis was the, the voice of Hayes' athletic successes and failures. And every time that I listen to the Royals game on XM Radio, I think back to those days. You know, as students, as people growing up in Hayes, we came to campus and we were in speech contests and industrial arts fairs and, and art shows. And the, con the university had concerts and it had plays and it had tennis courts and it had protests and it had streakers. <laughs> you know, and, and that was all on our front porch. We didn't have to go anywhere. Fort Hayes is absolutely part of the fabric of growing up in Hayes and for, for that, I and many others will always be grateful. But Fort Hayes was also my university. You know, it was the easy choice. It was absolutely the right choice. I received a great liberal arts education. I was exposed to ideas and places and stories and theories that challenged my thinking and really opened my eyes and prepared me to leave Ellis County. And, and while I was a student, I was mentored by two outstanding men to whom I'll always be grateful. That's Dan Rupp and Bill Jellison. You know, I learned under their guidance that I could lead, that I could organize, that I could motivate, and Larry, that I could challenge authority tactfully. But I learned that here. Ford Hayes gave me opportunities to prepare and to engage the world, and it served me very, very well in my career. And I stand here now very humbly to accept this award from my university and from my hometown. Uh, I've had a, an extraordinary life. I never, ever would have guessed when I graduated that I'd be where I was and did what I have done. And I tell you that as we receive this award, as I receive this award, I have to believe there are so many other outstanding graduates of this university that have made a mark on Western Kansas and the country and the world who probably deserve this before me, but I'm not going to turn it back. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of it. And I want to say that I could never have done what I've done except for the extraordinary support of my co-traveler, my wife, Anne-Marie. You know, we've moved 14 times. I've had 11 different jobs. We lived in three different countries. And through all of that, Anne-Marie was unwaveringly supportive and cheerful. She's the only person that, if I, you know, that I know of that when I come home and say, let's move again, she goes, OK, great. You know, I like curtains. So Anne-Marie, thank you, thank you very much. Yesterday, um, I took a walk through the Memorial Union, and I looked at the plaque out here in the hallway that lists all the prior recipients of this award. I saw that the plaque was updated with Patty, with my friends here today. Um, but when you look at the recipients of the award, to be honored, for me, to be honored along with Bob Schmidt and Norbert Dreiling, I have to tell you, that's the most that any German boy from Ellis County could hope for. <laughs> for me to be honored along with Gary Hewlett and Rose Arnold and John Thorns and Jerry Tomanic, who when I was a student represented the best of this university, 
that's incredible. For me to be honored along with Dan and Bill, who really helped make me the man I am. It's gratifying. And for me to be honored along with my brother Wayne, who received this award in 1986, um, would have made Charlie and Pia very proud. Uh, my family couldn't be here tonight. My kids are in Chicago. My local family had to make a choice because my great nephew is the quarterback for the lacrosse high school team. They're 5-0. and oh. Taylor's really pretty good. And if it was a choice between going to Inman and watching the game and coming here and listening to me, they made the right choice. But I know they would have liked to have been here. Once again, I just wish to express my heartfelt appreciation. This school, this town have meant so much to me and continue to mean so much to me and my family. Thank you very much. Someone asked, you know, what is uh, this evening like? And I said, it's a family affair. And I think now you know why we say that. Everyone that's here is invited, is a guest of one of the people that we're honoring. Unlike some honoring events where we try to sell 500 tickets and generate money, that's not what this is about. This is about remembering the family, remembering the people that have made a difference in our institution and honoring people who we can be proud of as they move forward uh, in their lives. And fortunately, tonight is uh, Lyle been recorded and it will be streamed on the internet and uh, they'll be able to see uh, uh, your comments and your remarks uh, over and over again if they want to in between uh, ball games over the next few weeks. In these, uh, in these events, every once in a while, we give another award that is, uh, is not been done uh, on a regular basis. In fact, in the 25 years that I've been president, this award has only been given six times in the history of the award. And it's the President's Distinguished Award. And it, uh, someone said, well, how do you get it? And I say quickly, it takes a unanimous vote to achieve that. And uh, there is a secret society that participates in this process. And I am sworn to secrecy as to, uh, of course, uh, that process. The first winner of the award was Li Pai Wu. Li Pai Wu was the first Chinese uh, uh, student that attended Fort Hayes and then went on to be tremendously successful. He came to the United States because he was run out of his country for what he stood for. He was on the wrong side in that particular, well, probably the right side, but the wrong side when it came to the military. And he chose Fort Hayes, as he said in his acceptance speech, because he looked around and he saw that it was the most inexpensive MBA program that he could find. And so he came here, and he had a sister in St. Louis, and he saw that was in the center of the United States, so it was doable from his perspective. And for those of you who know, he went on then to be the CEO and chairman of the board of the National Bank of Alaska. Uh, he went on to become the CEO and uh, also part owner of Western Airlines when it went bankrupt and take it out of bankruptcy and made millions of dollars, which he turned into Gold Bank, which he then took to uh, Forbes magazine, making the cover of Forbes magazine, always going on and pointing out that he learned about how to run businesses at Forte State. And then on retirement, returned to Formosa to be chief of staff to President Lee uh, who was also a gentleman that was run out of the country with him because they were in school together and on the wrong side of that uh, political debate. Other people that have gotten the award are Mickey Spillane, Bob Dole, just minor people who have made significant contributions to our country and to our culture and our history. And tonight we, are, we honor the seventh individual to receive our outstanding uh, President's Award. And so at this time, I'd like to ask Gary Shearer to please join me at the dais.
Gary Shearer um, and I have known one another since 1962. He didn't remember me back then, but I remembered him. He had just won the National Bay Championship with a colleague. Shearer and Lawson were notoriously uh, tough competitors on the collegiate debate circuit in his last year of, uh, of competition. And he was uh, graduating, and so Emporia was trying to figure out a way to reload, and they got stuck with four freshmen. Uh, I was happened to be one of the four that uh, was selected and recruited to try to replace him. I guarantee you we didn't even come close to winning a national championship. But he went on to make significant difference in the lives of many Kansans. Because not only was he the former, is he the former lieutenant governor of the state of Kansas, former chair of the Kansas Board of Regents, uh, he has also made, the, made leadership and education important part of our state and important part of his life. When you look at Gary, he earned his bachelor's degree from Emporia State. He began his career as a public school teacher specializing in speech and debate before entering the field of banking where he was involved with Bank 4 when I came back to the state 25 years ago. He was one of the vice presidents. He uh, went on to become secretary of the Department of Commerce from 95 to 2002 and uh, led the efforts to really help grow Kansas. He, in his term, increased our job rate by 42,000. He trained and was responsible for training programs that trained over 100,000 Kansans and produced $2 billion in capital improvements to the state. And talking with uh, Governor Graves, who called me when he heard about the fact we were giving the award and said, Ed, I really, Linda and I would really like to be there, uh, but because of a prior commitment, we can't. He said, would you tell a story because most people don't know that Gary Shear had a plan and it was a plan to make Kansas better. And he said, there's two things you need to do to make the state better. You have to do something with Wyandotte County. Now, this is a Republican administration worrying about Wyandotte County. You gotta do something with Wyandotte County. And you can turn the Kansas City area into just this tremendous en engine of growth. And so he spearheaded the, the project of going down and getting the Kansas Speedway project assigned to the state of Kansas because we were competing with other states. Went down to Florida, close to the uh, little shack on the beach that the ghouls own uh, there in Daytona, and made the pitch on behalf of Kansas. And when I was talking to the Francis not long ago, because I'm working on a project with them for uh, a project there in Kansas City, they said it was Gary Shearer that made the difference. And Governor Graves made it clear to me that it was Gary Shearer's idea to change Wyandotte County by creating something called the Star Bonds and creating a development that not only involved the, the racetrack, but the land around it that we now see being developed. And he has changed uh, Kansas City. He and his late wife, Judy, did so much while they were citizens together in Wichita. One of the things that I always hold as the most important thing, or one of the most important things he did, was creating Leadership Kansas, which was, I think, one of the most significant things in our state, and so many people have benefited from that program. He and Judy had two children, Nancy and Stuart, but more importantly, Nancy has a, grand, has a child that now makes him a grandfather, which now in his retirement is his number one job. At this time, I would like to present our university's highest award for public service to my friend and to someone I always looked up to for his leadership in public service, Gary Shear. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I will tell you, if, if no other reason I'm proud to have this award tonight is, unlike most of you, I finally get to stand up. <laughs> and it really feels good. <laughs> so, so if you have that need, go ahead. You're not going to offend me. Uh, uh, just a couple of things, and then I'll get to a couple of notes and get out of your way here. But uh, 
the, the racetrack story, one thing I will tell you, because I was watching today, and, you know, they're racing this week, and, and uh, uh, old man France was a tough, tough bird, let me tell you. He was, he was hard to negotiate with. But we did get to the place where it looked like we were all ready to go. And then I said to him, there's only one other thing you need to know. And, and he said, what's that? And I said, I will not sign the star bonds unless the track is called the Kansas Speedway. It cannot be called the Kansas City Speedway because I don't want it confused with Kansas City Chiefs in Missouri, the Kansas City Royals in Missouri, um, I mean, I still harbor real feelings about Quantrill, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't going to let that happen, so that's why it is the Kansas Speedway, because that's what it, it, it should be. Uh, first, I want to I, I want to do a couple thank yous, too. Uh, you were introduced to uh, Dr. Ed Flinchy, who's the interim president of Emporia State University, and for him to have taken this time to come out and sit with me as sort of part of my family is, is really special and, and uh, I'm really touched by it. Someone who wasn't introduced at our table but is Ken Hush and Ken is uh, the chair of the Emporia State University Foundation and he has worked harder the last two years than and I'm just here to tell you than any chair that's ever served in that capacity. But I'm gonna tell you what kind of a friend he is. He just got back, he, his responsibilities are small uh, in his career. He just has a responsibility for all of Europe and all of Asia. And uh, he is not good enough again, apparently, to get South America. I do not know what his problem is, but there's, so. Uh, he just got back from a, a long trip to Europe. And Sunday, he leaves for a long trip for Asia and he gave up tonight to come from Wichita to sit at my table as my friend. And that is something those of you out here who are with friends know, and that's something I'll never forget. So thank you, Ken, for being here. Uh, I feel very comfortable at, at, in Hayes as a community and, and Fort Hayes State University. I know so many, I've worked with so many on so many different projects. I, uh, as Secretary of Commerce, I worked on bringing jobs to the community. We had some projects here. Uh, I've been able to work with the university people and get to know them as a regent. Uh, uh, Mark and I go back a long way when he was in Topeka, actually, before he came here. And I've gotten to know Provost Larry Gould. And before I got on the regents, I didn't even know what a provost was. And, uh, and apparently, Larry told me it's a a Greek word for the m person who does all the work on a campus. <laughs> and I had never heard that before. And uh, so that's just some of the stuff you kind of learn. Now, I, I am living in Broomfield, Colorado because that's where my granddaughter is. And that's just the whole reason I'm there. Uh, so let's just end the rumor that in exchange for this award, I was to leave Kansas. <laughs> that just absolutely isn't true. There's a three-year-old that has gotten me to, to leave Kansas. You know, I, I generally am pretty comfortable with words, but I will tell you, uh, as I thought about this tonight, um, I, I, there will not be enough words and enough effective words for me to express to you what this award means to me. It is so absolutely special to me. Um, you know, one thing about awards is, is you really measure them by who's giving them. I mean, there are lots of awards around for lots of things, but you measure by who's giving them. So I think about it and I think, well, Fort Hayes State University, first of all, and I'm telling you, I'm, I'm the only non-alum that's been up here tonight, but I am telling you as one who's been on the campus of every single community college, every single technical school, and every single one of our state universities, and as someone who is not a graduate here, but is a graduate of rival school, this isn't a good university. This is an outstanding university in how it looks and how it feels and the quality of the people it produces. 
And so when something outstanding gives you an award, it does mean so very much to you. But the other aspect of who gives the award is it's the presidential award. And therefore, it means that it's, it's part of what Ed Hammond believes in and what he does. And I, I will tell you what a talent, what a combination of vision and energy and all those skills that are able to translate a vision into reality. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny. We've got some presidents who have been president of our state universities who have written books about themselves. Ed's a little different. He just writes history. And he writes history in a way that his impact in this quarter century that he's been here on this university and this community and this state is immeasurable. I mean, I think, you know what happens to us? I think we start taking things for granted when they are so good. And we don't appreciate the fact that there are universities out there who are struggling. Their enrollments are not going up. Their support isn't strong. And they, they don't have a beautiful campus. And that's why I am so proud of this award because it's coming from, I think, one of the most remarkable university presidents in any of our university systems history. And I think time will tell that uh, much better than I've been able to tonight. But equally important to me, and probably more important, is not his skills and his talents, but the fact that he is a real friend. You know, I think about Thomas Paine and the Sunshine Soldier. Well, let me tell you, there are sunshine friends, too. And they like being there with you when things are going well, but they're never to be found when things are tough. These two guys are, are not those kind of friends. They're the real friends. This is the real guy. Now, I, I have this one problem, and that is I'm always in trouble because I tell people exactly how I feel about things. <laughs> and if, that is not necessarily always a good quality. When I left the Board of Regents, I'd always wanted to be a regent, believe it or not, ever since I knew what they were. But I never thought I'd be one. And as some of you know, I had a meeting and a half left to go. And if I just shut up and sit there, they would have given me a nice plaque and things would have gone well. But I think there are principles in your life that if you start giving up on them, I mean, when you start cutting corners on your principles, I don't think you have them. And actions were being taken that were not fair to one of our universities, in my judgment. And I was not going to be part of it. And I was not going to go along to get along so we'd have this nice, smooth thing. And so, in, abruptly, <laughs> in the middle of a meeting, I told the people how proud I am of our higher ed system and the people in it and the great job they do, how honored I was to have worked with them. But I was not about, I think my term was, life's too short to spend it with people you don't want to be around doing things you don't believe in doing. And with that, I left. Now, the fact that this guy was the first person and one of the few to call me and said a sentence to me. You deserve better than that. Your legacy is more than that. And then put his actions where his words were and said that he wanted me to accept this award. I'm telling you, that's when you know the character and the quality of a friend. And I am so, so very grateful that he was willing to do that when others were disappearing quickly over the horizon. Uh, one acknowledgement I do have to give, and, and Ed and, and Ken and, and Ed Falinji uh, 
are aware of this, that if, if I were to accept this award without acknowledging uh, my late wife, uh, for 45 years, we, uh, we were an interesting pair. Everybody loved her and tolerated me, and it was a, uh, <laughs> it was a pretty good combo, though. And uh, we, we got a lot done, and we have two great kids, great son-in-law, and no offense to any of you, but the world's cutest, smartest three-year-old granddaughter <laughs> possible. I am grateful to all of them because they've been so supportive of me all through the years and the things I've wanted to do. Let me just say this to you. I know there are people more deserving of this recognition than I am. I understand that, and, and you know it too. But I'm gonna tell you from the bottom of my heart, no one you could have given it to would be more grateful than I am to receive this, more honored than I am to receive this. And humble, unfortunately, is not an adjective that generally is used in describing me. But you have humbled me because this award has touched me so deeply at a time that is so important for me to be touched that way that I will never forget it. I will always remember Fort Hayes State University the people of the university and the people of this community. And this is just not another plaque. This is a strong memory that will never ever leave me. And for that, I will be forever grateful. Thank you very much. They like they like standing. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you'll all have a chance to uh, applaud Gary tomorrow because one of the things that goes along with this award is you are the grand marshal for the homecoming parade. Everyone will be able. He's been practicing. His granddaughter's been trying to teach him how to how to do that. Uh, so our community will be able to thank him for his major contributions to the state. Uh, and I think, uh, Gary, the real reason Ken is here uh, is not because he's the, you know, vice president in charge of all, everything at Coke, except South America. I don't understand that either. But uh, uh, that he knows he did his homework, and he knows that after Lee Pai Wu got the award, he made a major gift to the university. And after Bob Dole got the award, he gave us uh, $10 million for our facility. Um, let me assure you. Let me assure you that not every winner of the award, ask Darren, where's Darren? Darren's here, isn't he? Yeah. Not every winner of the award has turned around and made a multi-million dollar gift to us. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> no, it's our way of recognizing some special people and in effect making you part of our family. And we thank you very much for being willing to come and be the Grand Marshal for the parade and to uh, be part of tonight's special event. In closing my part, let me turn it back over for remarks from, from our, our leader here, who does such a fantastic job. You said, steal my thunder. No, you don't have to. We can thank the staff, because they work very hard to make this weekend, this event, uh, an important one. So let's give Deborah a round of applause as she comes back up and makes the remark. Thank you, Dr. Hammond. All right, folks, we're almost done. Great things have happened here at Fort Hayes State and which have made us proud and they'll continue to happen. Signs of success are ongoing, but the university's real sign of success is each and every one of you who are here tonight. The successful people who are associated with the graduates, the friends that we honor here tonight. And I would like award honorees, please stand up. If you would, once again, and stay standing. You are a part of a select group of individuals who have followed your dreams, you've set new standards, 
and you've climbed to new heights. Each and every one, you epitomize the very best of the best. And we wish you, each of you continued success wherever life may lead. Thank you. All right, just a few quick things before we adjourn. Homecoming is still going on. Uh, we have so many things. We had four events tonight. And actually, there's another fifth event that's going. There's a wedding going on downstairs as soon as this is over. But we salute all of our uh, reunion classes, 5161, all specialty. We're honoring football, all your football, VIP ambassadors, Wesley Foundation, Block and Bridal. And I'd like to definitely let you know tomorrow in the parade, all of our honorees, you need to report to the Robbins Center at 1145. Remember the long list of instructions I gave you? That's in there. Uh, pictures for tonight, we have pictures of all of our awardees, and we do ask that if you just go out through the exit, turn to the left, the Pioneer Room is there, please join, please join us, we take a group shot. Families may join us if they like. Uh, we have picnic tickets tomorrow, if anyone still wants to go to a, a great chicken picnic dinner as we take on the Pittsburgh Gorillas, right Gary, or Larry? Yeah. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs> But when you do exit tonight, I ask that uh, you can exit and there is a stairwell or a, the elevator here. Use the south one, go down to the first floor. Once you get to the bookstore or the spiral staircase, turn left because indeed there is a wedding that is going to go on here shortly. But on behalf of Fort Hayes State University and the Alumni Association, may this homecoming be a very special one, a memorable one for each of you. Good night, everyone. Have a great weekend, and thank you all for coming.